has been going on like that since the wind died. Something's got him worked up. Take your wigs off. Don't you hear that? Give me a glass. Yeah. Just don't drop it. it belongs to Lieutenant Air. Oh, fuck. An impractical one. Oh, careful there. Why, is that some kind of trees inside? You should have run more nails through that lid. Pull up the ropes and fill it in, Mr. Hickey. Me? Mr. Hornby tells me you have the most duty, Owen. Didn't tell me why. Grousing, probably. Oh, we're we just going to leave it like that. Unless you want to climb in there and fix it. Yes, we are. Up to it, Mr. Hickey. Men approaching. That is, we thought you might be in need of a short gentleman to keep warm. That's a generous, generous thought, sir. What bait are we using? Rats, sir. We pulled the biggest of the bunch up from the holes, gutted them, and tied them up on lines. You'll put our Fagin out of a job. Although, that lair rat couldn't catch a rat if it fell asleep in its mouth. It's meant to be a lap dog, not a cat. Or maybe a small pillow. Good, sir. Hold still. Not a twitch. Wonderful. In honor of our brother, Lieutenant Gore, be merciless. Educate this creature as to the dominion of the Empire and the will of the Lord behind it. Sir, yes. why don't you sit with us? Perhaps it can be you who fires the shot that convinces it. At least be here to see it felled. Yes, I'll sit with you for a moment. Thank you. <laughs> you may return to the ship, Mr. Goetze. You need a chaperone? Yes. <laughs> or you may stay with us.
Mr. Armitage, what do you report? He's still breathing. Came over the gunnel, sir. Oh my God. We didn't see it till we went back over the side. That in trees. Move him down below immediately. Find the hammer and take the staggered. But he's hanging in there like that. He's a royal marine. Now, what the bloody hell do people think that means? Hey, no man here knows but us. Now, we did not ask to be here. Do we harp on about it? No. We get no bonus pay. Yet we step up to tangle with that thing on the ice. First in line and the first cut down. Corporal Hedges, Private Daly, Mr. Hickey, Mr. Wilson, Seaman Crisp and Seaman Walker. Next bell's your watch. Look out for yourself. Oh, I will. Chris! Get below! Alert command! Now! Yes, Cogo. They said you spotted a camp from the last sledge party. What of it? Tell me where you found it. Exactly where you found it. Subordination. Neglect of duty. Disrespect. Brutality. Kidnapping. And dirtiness. Petty officer Cornelius Hickey will be flogged 30 lashes. As a boy. Again. Tara may be at risk, man. They see the cannon flash from the position camp, and then they mark how long after it the sound arrives. And the light will travel faster, but less so the colder it is. Or something to that tune. It's a reason to shoot off a six-pounder anyway. You must hear it down here. Do you remember the old lad on the Prince Regent that Doxies used to call six-pounder? Where's he right now, do you think? I'm ready to go up, Private.
the bar and over the side onto the ice. Aye, go, go, go on. We've got homes we from the first sunrise of the year. So, to the mainland. And we have several... <laughs> now if it comes it comes all you can do is make sure you're not the one in its jaws thank you mr hickey i hope i'm still next to you when it comes just giving me permission for a good shove <laughs> it's been waiting for us to do exactly what we're doing there's no defenses out there there's a choice billy ignorance is a choice I just believe Lieutenant Fairholm is on his way back with help. That these natives are our friends. The haze, but it could be worse. What are you asking, Billy? He also told us the lemon juice is bored off the skin, isn't it? Right when it gets bad, the gums pull back, the scars dissolve and open back up. What's this on your mind? friends. Am I? We can make a go of it for ourselves, can't we? A smaller group. Because 40 men are going to be too slow on that ice. Let me tell you. Well, the ice will be slow going regardless. But once we make land... And it'd be better to wait until the larger group holds all the supplies to solid ground. It would, yes. That gives us time, then, to think things through. I suspect there are others who'd be friendly to this. Be good to find a few more. Sort the ranks out of this in advance. Find our way safely, Mr. Lead them off, Lieutenant. Everyone. Oh, I've got you, I've got you, I've got you. That's it, that's it. You shouldn't be on any watch, I haven't got the bottom for them off. Sorry to leave your watch duty if Mr. Goodsay knew you. Oh, good Christ.
I'll sweep this morning was further out than yesterday's dog watches. A more from here would never have seen it. Sledge party. Who else has seen this? Or knows? Just us four now, sir. On pain of a full court martial, no one is to hear of this until such time as Captain Fitzjames and myself decide to share it with the men. Yes, sir. several weeks here. It'd be best to tamp down every trace of illness before continuing. It was a hard trip, even for the hailist in our party. I never want to feel ice under my boots again. We make it out of this. All these men deserve medals in gold. We make it out of this. The men deserve every gold thing there is. Did you sight anything at all on your trek here? You saw no signs of the creature, if that's your question. Sir? Lieutenant? The Primus is drawn now, but it's not loaded. How do you mean, Sergeant? I'd like to recommend arming some additional men in camp. Even with our camp tightly pitched, the size of the perimeter still concerns me. We're only eight Marines now, and it would be a help to us to bolster our numbers armed. Who first comes to mind? We'll put some thought into it. Armitage, he's a crack shot, as is Crisp. Lanson's up to it, seems to me. Keeley, Coombs, Mr. Hickey would be a good help. We'll hold off. Sir, so I recommend that It'll we... It'll be a waxing moon tonight, yes? Head to full. We'll be able to see miles in every direction. If something comes hunting us, there'll be time to ring the alarm and arm more men even from sleep. The site was well chosen. It's going to be difficult to surprise us on such level ground. Hmm? Right, sir. We can revisit this. But for the moment, the armory is closed past arms for Marines and officers. Aye, sir. Morphy. He's stuck it out. We just collapsed, sir. What? What do you need, Morphy? Well, he... He'd shoot me. What are you doing, Lee? Lee? Put me down. going to put you down. Morphine. 
things to try when we discuss this. I have uh, wine of coca, for instance. That will certainly be a, a tonic for you now we've stopped and camped. John. John. If Dr. Goodsir thinks that wine of coca will help, it's worth trying, isn't it? You'll never get yourself back to Gainsborough if you don't try everything. Gainsborough, yes? Where your people are? Seaman Morfin, lower your weapon. That's an order. Clear, Sergeant. Carry Mr. Morphin to the store's tent. Bury him in the morning. Lieutenant Hodgson, will you oversee it, please? Go back to your tents. Thanks. Try to get some sleep. It's best if we keep our talk low. Very well. What do you think happened to Morphin last night? What was it? He was tired of being in pain. It made him desperate. Because he was ill. Ill how? Scurvy, I suppose. Enough men are showing sign of it. It's not scurvy. Dr. Good says Dr. Good says says lying to you. To all of us. As is the captain. And not only about this. What happened to Morphin? It's happening to all of us. And good sir, Crozier, know it. And it's gonna keep happening as long as we're eating from the tins. Something in them is making us weak and weird, building up in the body. And how do we know this? An Erebite heard Mr. Good sir telling doctors MacDonald and Peddy something of it at Carnival. But no one told you. <laughs> but if that's true, what can we do about it? We have nothing else to eat. We're moving further south now. Now there's more chance of running into game. Well, then we'll be spared. Say we catch a ring seal. Let's say we catch three. Red meat. Fresh meat can get us off these tins. What happens on that day? When you finally got a decent plate of meat in front of you. Who is that? Chris, Lieutenant Hodgson, it's not a man. Though it did belong to one. What have you done? Just keep listening. I know this will make sense to you. Maybe only to you. With even this amount of meat, we could have a capital meal right now. The three of us. We could make it last several days. Under Crozier's plan, we divide this meat into nearly a hundred portions till each of us gets next to nothing. Now, even if we find game, even bigger game than this, 
with the help of Crozier's Eskimo friends. It would have to be in numbers we can all agree are next to impossible. Crozier's plan is bootless. And you know it. Blind me. You made a mistake, Miss Tiggy. Miss Fogg was our only alarm against the creature. It broke its front leg on the rocks. I found it. And I put it down. I'm not asking you to believe me about that. What are you asking me? There will be a moment when the numbers make sense to more of the men. And when that moment comes, we need an officer who sees things clearly. I'm not a captain. I'm not made of that. You can be whatever you need to be now. Survival is a nasty piece of business. But we do what we have to do. We reconfigure. We reinvent. We rearrange. Let me be your lieutenant in a new arrangement. Let us get out together. Let's put our hope in our own hands. Because what I have to tell you next is going to stamp out most of the hope you've been given. We'll be back by afternoon watch if you need more volunteers, Sergeant. Today may be the day. Guns. If I was them, I'd be back behind those raised bars to the south, a mile out, waiting for this to get just a bit worse. If we're going to be cut down today, I'd be grateful for a shotgun. I want a fighting chance of killing at least as many of them as kill me. You've heard things, Danny. Out in the fog, have you? Not us yet. Yes. I have, sir. I almost rang the alarm just now. You've only just arrived. Shales sliding around as if underfoot. A whistle, maybe. Quarter mile out, possibly. It's hard to tell in this fog. We just have our ears now. Out there. That way. You heard that whistle too, then? There it is again, Sergeant. Damn it all. Put your backs. Everyone stand still. Where is Commander Fitzjames? I haven't seen him, sir. Then it was not he who made this order. There was no order, sir. An attack is being staged right now using that fog as cover. My men can hear it. And you allowed this? Without knowing their numbers and having no familiarity with their tactics, our gunpowder is our only advantage. This camp has no cover whatsoever. Who knows if the Esky girl's been sending them signals as to what we're all about. If they come, they will blow through us like a wind. Perhaps you'd like to make the order, sir. The time is now. Mr. Armitage, do not scrimp on that logbook. I want to see a record of every issue taking place here. We'll proceed first with Petty Officer Cornelius Hickey. 
who has been convicted today of the wanton murders of Lieutenant John Irving and Petty Officer Thomas Farr. Ample evidence has been stated before command so as to suggest Mr. Hickey's guilt well proven. With that proof comes confirmation of the next more pernicious charges of sedition and mutinous designs. These charges are all punishable by death. And at Captain Crozier's discretion, the sentence will be carried out by hanging before the men now assembled. Mr. Hickey and Sergeant Tozer will be given last words. But first, your captain would like to speak. When we abandon ship, I promised you men two things. The first was that help was already on its way to us, back from Fort Resolution, with Lieutenant Fairholm and the party I sent out last summer. We now know those men are dead. I found them on watch, and Captain Crozier had me swear an oath of silence. Which you broke. Now be quiet, you'll get a chance to speak. Sergeant Tozier, uh, I don't know what Mr. Hickey's plan was, but I know it didn't include all of you. And those of you who might have gone with him, I can promise you he would have burned through you like fuel, lied to you and used you down to your last muscle. It's fresh, sir. Louder so they can all hear. It's fresh meat. What kind of meat? Seal, sir. Thank you. The other promise I made to all of you was that when we crossed paths with the next elect, that they would help us. Lieutenant Irving met them. And do you know what they did to him? Dr. Good, sir, would you please? They fed him. They fed him. They didn't cut him down and deface him. That was Mr. Hickey. They didn't slice off his man parts and punch 23 holes into his lungs with a boat knife. That was Mr. Hickey! They were no war party, those Eskimo. They were more of a family, it seemed. Four men, an old woman, and a girl. A little girl. No more than six years old. Mr. Hickey lied to you. Mr. Hickey lied to all of you because he needed to cut the legs out from under my leadership. And in so doing, he was prepared to set all your lives swinging. Now, we will share this meat, Dr. Goodsir. But that line of help has been cut off from us now. We'll find another, no doubt, but not with gammoning dogs like this among us. <laughs> Hear me, men. I take no pleasure in these deaths today. I want to bring every last one of you home. But if I cannot bring these two, then I am only doubly resolute about the rest of you. Now, before we hear Mr. Hickey's last words, I have one more request to make of you. I need volunteers to man the rope. You two, come forward. Mr. Hickey. Yeah. I've let the captain speak now long enough telling every manner of falsehood against me, proving only every man lies. Even this man, your uh, captain, 
but I must pace this thing he calls truth with another of his own recent deceptions. June the 11th, last year, the day Sir John was killed, something else transpired. Crozier made a plan. In secret. To get himself out without you. There are many feats that preoccupy a captain's imagination. But abandoning his ship and his men should not be among them. Yet I hereby tender my... Oh, go on, Captain, you finish it. Where's that? <laughs> Mr. Collins. tell you again. No one can see you now. You're invisible. They'll think you've died and been carried off. Get on the ground. Mickey didn't get to say half of what he wanted to say. Edward. That's your name, isn't it? Edward. Crozier was going to leave that sledge party himself and leave. Quit the Navy. Quit all of us. You didn't know that, did you? He was going to leave you a big losing hand, Edward. Watch out. <laughs> The others. What should I come on them? They've moved on. Have you hunted anything? There's no game here. But we have food. You have things in hand. There's still a place for you here. If you want it. Is that about right? Needs have changed, Lieutenant. We need to ask ourselves what are we willing to eat next?
apparent either. Doctor. What's that, Mr. Gibson? Confidence. To any of us. Then they camp again, about six miles away, and there was a friendly face among them. They're pitching all their tents now. They must plan to be there a while. Make our camp here, then. In the bosom of this hill. Why you were brought? You're an anatomist. You've cut up more bodies than you can probably now remember. Twenty. I've performed on twenty. Why? And don't say for my education. You did so for the greater benefit of others. For the sick. For the dying. In hopes of helping them. That is exactly where we are now. You've murdered this man. Whom you now wish to eat. And you're unwilling to butcher his flesh yourself. But you will have to. We do not know which parts. Yes, you do. Of course you do. If I'm... Reading right your accent, Mr. Hickey. You grew up in a home where you'd have to use every part of any meat or fowl your mam could procure. So if you want to eat your friend, you're going to have to cut into him yourself. Do not ask me again. I am now deciding. Which parts of Lieutenant Hodgson I will cut into first. For every hour you refuse to apply yourself to this, you will stand apart no longer. I'll give you some advice. Don't indulge your morals over your practicals. Not now. Don't you also want to live? Sit with it an hour. And then, we'll consider your choice made. Mr. Good, sir, come out.
Where? I've got Crozier's group of very scant few miles ahead of it, and ours a very few miles behind. Gonna find one of us or the other, I have no doubt about it. Can we bait it in their direction? We should return to the ships. I've seen the charts, Cornelius. We're barely a quarter of the way. We've seen more signs of melt. Mr. DeVoe sighted beds. If we head back immediately, we can be assured of getting back to Terra and Erebus before they have enough open water to leave. We can keep a loyal crew. We can head away from this place, away from this devil. But you finally sound frightened, Solomon. We don't want to meet this thing again. You can't beat it. There's a queer melody for a Marine. I saw that thing there, Mr. Collins. You've told me. Didn't tell you all. I haven't told anyone all. Do you believe a man has a soul? How have you come to that belief? Have you seen one? I have. I saw Mr. Collins's soul. I know that's what it was. And I watched that creature. Ingest it. on it. Watched it happen from a few yards away, I'm not mistaken. It breathed that man's soul in. Following the captain's group now, let's take that opportunity and get as many miles between us as we can. Get back to the ships and be there when the leads open. Not here. Not here. This does mean a new plan. Can you signal to our friend ahead? Yes. See, he's been up there since morning. What's he doing? Listening to his thoughts. Does he know yet we got his message through? Not been down. And I dare not go up. Are we waiting for his permission? No. But we need the boat. And so we need enough men with us to haul it. This needn't be a second mutiny. You'll see reason. I'd rather take our chances without the boat and get there much faster. We can beat the Thor and get across the ice back to the we'll ship. We'll do what we have to do, Tommy. But we'll do it tomorrow. Come and join us. Let the men begin. Will not happen. Private Armitage, bring Mr. Crozier forward. Oh. Mr. Golding, stand up.
After dinner, we're climbing the hill, man. There's something he's doing now. Mr. Crozier's with us. A few of you will have parts to play as well. Mr. DeVoe? Do we still have with us that boat chain? We do. So, two miles, daggering off a weak left side. Off this chain! He is sick then, the creature. Cornelius! He's sick from what he eats, Mr. Hickey. Dis-moi, ce que tu manges. Je suis dire, ce que dire. And in English, Mr. Hodgson, tell me what you eat. And I will tell you what you are. I detect a double meaning there. We don't meet the creature soon. We set up a signal fire on this hill. Now, he may not have his senses. He may need help finding us. Have we come here to give it a royal death, then? If it's ill, we should put every shot we have in its head and butcher it. Now, while it's weak, I have a different plan. Well, perhaps it's time you told us what that plan is. That creature is everything we need. Meat and fur. We can make at least ten great coats out of it and make it back to London full bricks. You think you're going back? Oh, where else are we hoping to get? I can't go back. <laughs> a man called Cornelius Hickey told me this expedition was a year in the Polar Sea. And then out the other side. He told me the ships planned to stop at the Sandwich Islands and the crew was going to dry out in the sun. That's the other side of the world, I thought. Oh, a year's nothing. So I dabbed him, left him in Mises Canal. And there I am instead. You could have just joined up. I was going to show you my eels when we got to those islands, you know. I'm going to hook it. Start new. It's in the drawings, in the weeklies. Oahu. Maui. That sounded nice. And no one told me I'd be freezing to death three bloody years instead, did they? I've learned what I needed to. The bug of London, I'm going forward. Only forward. So call it with me now, boys. Come on, together. God bless our native flag. May heaven's protecting hand to guard our shores. May peace of power extend. Oh, come on! It's us to carry, men. Come on! God bless. We're here! Book of Victoria! Where are you? Book of Nelson, Book of Jesus, Book of Joseph and Mary, Book of the Archbishop of Canterbury. No one ever wanted nothing from me. It's here. It's here. I'm here for last time. Are we going to kill it or not? Let it come, Mr. DeVoe. Open yourself to courage. What if we're not the heroes of this story? Yeah, go after those who are running at first. Every story I've ever been told about the holy throne of Britain has a shine on it, doesn't it? But I bet you never saw in Shoreditch the breath of a god in the air. Never met a man with his soul et out 
There are holy things before us. Magnus, Mr. DeVoe, come forward to the others. Stag your position on the line. When it comes over the top, it's gonna have its head low, so anticipate that with your aim. <laughs> Our empire is not the only empire. We've seen that now. If you run, you'll die. If you miss, we'll die. Tommy, give me your gun. I'm the best shot here. There's nothing that way, Mr. Ho! Sorry, Tom. It's before me. Oh, Christ! Thank <laughs> you. 